Good afternoon. You're watching AV Live, a brand new news-based chat show in which we discuss topics ranging from news, business, politics, and so much more. On today's episode, we will be understanding the concept of prop tech, and in the studios, we have Prabhu Ramachandran and Fahad Mohammed. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Right, uh, Prabhu, I'm going to start with you. Tell us more about uh, Facilio. Okay, Facilio is a prop tech startup, and uh, we play in the post-construction life cycles of properties. Okay. Where we help our customers to optimize, continuously optimize their day-to-day -day operations and maintenance of the properties. Right. So now I, I'm going to ask you about your role in uh, they are owners association management. <laughs> so um, tell us more about that. I'm the director of FM for the are owners association management. We are again part of uh, the other PPJC. My main responsibility is to look after the common area assets mm -hmm. in the freehold properties that we manage. All right, great. So how do you all work together, like in terms of the organizations? How is it that you all can come together? Yeah, so our target customers are um, anyone who owns or operates large set of properties. So in that case, uh, uh, DR operates a lot of properties. They own a lot of properties. And uh, so we would be a solution vendor for DR kind of customers. All right. So I think now let's just try and understand the concept of prop tech. So we've heard about fintech, martech, retail tech, but prop tech isn't as common a term as the rest of them. So tell us briefly what it means for you. Prop tech, uh, it's, it's again a topic which is gaining momentum as we speak. Uh, it's been, I think, so heavily publicized last year, 2018, and this year it's been really, really in the media. Everybody's talking about prop tech because that's what, because a lot of properties are being constructed, a lot of big properties are being managed. Mm -hmm. A lot of properties are the maintenance aspect is being dealt with, the uh, the construction and the transfer has been happening as well. Right. So technology for the prop tech industry is important because today we are relying on data and these data is given by these technologies which are scalable enough for the years to come. Right. So now where exactly would technology play a role in terms of the whole real estate market? So I would say broadly in, uh, we can categorize into three areas to construct the properties, how can technology help to construct mm -hmm. in a better, faster way. Next one is to sell the properties, either sell, resell. That is where, uh, uh, there is another area where there is a lot of prop tips happening. All right. And uh, construction has been more mature. There is a lot of things have happened in the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, in last 10 years, uh, on the sales side, a lot of prop tech companies have come and disrupted this industry. All right. And the new emerging area is how do you operate these facilities? facilities because uh, uh, more and more the whole facilities are becoming core part of the brand either you go to a mall or you go to a um, say a, a hotel mm -hmm. uh, today uh, because of the competition in other forms like you know you take a hotels we have airbnb types emerging different alternate models coming up yeah there is competition next is uh, you you take a mall there is uh, e-commerce so you need to have some reason for people to come to the uh, box. So experience is becoming a core part of the brand. Right. So the whole operations and maintenance of these properties to make sure you provide best experience to customers so that they keep coming back. Right. So, so that, it's, it's sort of going against the myth of how e-commerce will replace malls. But in fact, what's happening right now, especially here, is they work hand in hand. E-commerce is sort of facilitating the move towards malls and the whole mobility, essentially. Yeah. One analogy I give is uh, even though coffee vending machines are there, people go to Starbucks right? <laughs> because it is just more than coffee so you do business you meet friends right? so malls will continue to attract uh, but the, the, the trick is how do you build an experience around that that is one area emerging area where technology is being applied mm -hmm. uh, to enhance experience of users of these properties okay so then let's just look at the real estate sector in the same conversation that we're having right now I'll ask you this uh, Fahad so do you see technology genuinely changing the dynamics of the sector right now at this juncture. Yes, indeed. There's a lot of uh, change and disruption that is happening in the property industry. If you look at uh, 10 years ago, how we rented, when we want to rent an apartment, uh, how we had actually called in or driven across the road and looked for toilet boards. Today, it's just open your mobile app and you have to visit so bayut.com or property finder, right. uh, depending on what are you looking at. Okay. You have all the information. So you have the rental information, you have the pictures. You don't have to physically visit. 
that you can sit in Abu Dhabi and look for a pop team to buy. Right. So and basically, so is, from what you're saying, it looks like the role of agents is going to be minimalized. Is that what you're getting at? Not exactly. But again, it's again, today's population requires to take informed decision. Mm -hmm. And this is what technology helps us, to take informed decisions rather than being relying on a single point of, you know, where you, so today, if you, uh, apart from the property, if you look at any, tr the travel market, we look for reviews before. Right. We want to buy something. Mm -hmm. We again look for reviews. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that happens online. Today, 42 billion US, and there are 20, uh, 42 billion internet users are available in the world. So that means there's a lot of, internet users who are seeking data or information from the internet. Right. So we all use it to make our life easier. So this is what even the property industry, So prop, I think the so real estate market has always stayed back because they wanted to be traditional. Yeah. They wanted to be people who are actually talking and leading the the uh, closing a sales deal or closing uh, a rental deal. But today, technology is aiding them to do it much faster. Oh, but that's exactly what I was going to get at. Why has this whole technological leap taken so much time? for the real estate market, which has been one of the most dominant markets in this region. So I would say it applies to many of the other markets all over where the adoption of technology is slow. But uh, it's happening in bits and pieces. If you look at uh, the uh, uh, things like people counting, space optimizations, these are already in practice. Okay. So, adopt, so there is always champions who come and then it becomes a norm. Um, so adoption is already happening, I would say. So it's not like we are really, really slow. Okay, so it is happening. But yeah. right now, in terms of the trends that we're talking about, mm -hmm. the real estate sector, mm -hmm. it's seen an evolution over the years, mm -hmm. uh, not just with the market conditions, but also the way real estate market is moving ahead has seen a huge evolution. So in terms of those trends, what would you say is an outlook for the coming years? It's going to definitely improve. There are gaps, there are improvements that is happening. Uh, obviously, uh, this any new thing that comes in that needs a transition. Today, I think so. We are in a transition stage. Mm -hmm. People are trying to understand what technology can give you, and it, it's again. Uh, there was a time, probably, if you look at the past few years, where technology was being pushed into by the tech companies. Right. Today, that is evolving into a customer experience, like what Prabhu was saying earlier. Because now we are focusing on what the customer needs. So having that information that we get, the feedback, for example, what sort of, um, there was this question one of the person asked recently, uh, how do you develop smart cities, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and his question was, if you start thinking on energy savings mm -hmm. and you start thinking on what it can do and you forget about what I need, I need to go home on time, yeah. I need to be with my family, True. right? So is, is this being thought out? So. Yes, obviously, this is what information gives us. So what smart technologies in the, uh, the prop tech industry and, and the building of data, it helps us to understand and give that feedback to the architects, give that feedback to the engineers, give that feedback to the developers to understand that this is what we have to build. Because okay. this is what my consumers at this point in time need. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, technology will help. Right, but, uh, but far, like just talking about that, right now we, we, th we seek organizations and companies throwing around buzzwords like digital transformation, AI, VR, XR, but not all of them really know the usage and the use cases of these things. So would you say that prop tech is in that sphere right now where people don't really know how to use it, but they know they have to use it? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. So it is in the early curve. A uh, lot of early adopters is in a stage where there is a lot of early adopters, you are adopting it, and then the followers will start following up. Uh, but uh, so the shift that is happening, that is all that is sprucing up this whole thing is uh, the facilities or property becoming core part of the brand. Earlier, maybe 10 years back, it was still like a cost center. I paid rent for my properties, mm -hmm. but now office is seen as part of the brand. Uh, a mall is seen as part of the brand. So so that, which means the importance of that the whole domain is coming up. So which means customers are looking at how can I use tech so that I can move fast. So that shift is happening. And uh, we see more and more, uh, particularly the larger companies, mm -hmm. the larger real estate owners, operators, they are more, uh, uh, they are in the forefront trying out new things. And 5G could be one of those new things, but do you think 5G can have a proper impact on this sector? 
Yes. Faster data and pushing in more bandwidth definitely can help uh, faster uh, information that can be pushed out to the different consumers who are looking for this information. How are we going to use it though? How are we going to use 5G to optimize our real estate experience from a buyer's and a seller's point of view? See, when it comes to connectivity, it's a core thing, but it's a, it's a smaller piece of the whole puzzle. And the major shift is going to come in real estate in the way it is going to be operated. So, um, so more and more what is happening is uh, real estate means physical buildings, physical facilities, right? Customers are starting to think them as one single entity. Right. So that is what happened in say a banking or a transportation where you can bank across the world now. Mm -hmm. So similarly in real estate, somebody has 50 properties across country. Can all of them be seen as one entity? So I'm having these 50 slots. Can I manage them? Can I optimize them? Can I compare against them? Mm -hmm. So that is the major shift that is happening, which is going to bring in a lot of behavioral changes. It will create newer roles for people to come and play. Okay. Uh, more technology driven role, more analytical role, more like more like business analyst will come. Right. Because it's all going to be data driven. But speaking of behavioral changes, uh, shared economy is mm -hmm. sort of a result of that. Mm -hmm. And now which has become one of the major part of most economies across the globe. Uh, Co-living spaces then, is that something that we could see here as one of the trends of real estate? Maybe in the years to come, but it's something that would take some time. Right now, I think so. The first acceptance we have received is the short-term uh, leasing of homes, sure. which like for players like Airbnb to come into the market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an evolving market, so we we have to wait and see. There's a lot of developments that may happen. Even Saudi Arabia is opening up on tourist visa, which is again quite uh, an interesting uh, thing that is happening. So obviously, there will be changes. There will be more developments to come. Right. We see shared economy in a different way where um, so in case of uh, particularly the post-construction life cycle of uh, properties how can you share resources to optimize maintenance how can you have a sharing economy on sustainability aspects uh, more collaborative approach how can you bring occupiers of the properties as part of your own initiatives like energy saving or water saving that kind of sharing will emerge uh, here so even though there are a lot of regulatory things on co-working mm -hmm. on the usage side but at the operation side uh, we see that already happening even for example facilities management companies can look at uh, they're already looking at technology uh, on how can how can they share optimize their own resources to but provide better services to their customers right so another thing that i would like to touch upon just as part of this conversation is crowdfunding so real estate crowdfunding is something that we've been hearing about right now which is off late especially with the emergence of a lot of new startups like smart crowd etc um, it's just such a confusing sphere right now for me I'm not, I'm not a real estate expert but then obviously there are uh, regulatory issues with crowdfunding there are issues to banks with crowdfunding so tell me how real estate crowdfunding works here on that. I think real estate crowdfunding in this region is uh, currently very limited mm -hmm. again because of a lot of regulatory things and uh, plus the dynamics of the market itself is slightly different here mm -hmm. so we are still in the early stage on that but isn't that going to be great though it's like democratizing the market right if that happens here True. It, it should definitely help in to bring in a lot of people who wants to be part of a, a, a new startup or uh, support that. They even crowdfunding is pretty much new in the rest of the world as well. Yeah. Just picking up base. True. But eventually, it, it might uh, as as we clear up on regulatory side when mm -hmm. uh, obviously the, the government or the required authorities look into it and if it really makes sense to them, they would def definitely bring. But again, uh, Middle East is a different market. Right. Right, so now again, uh, crowdfunding could be a very, very important aspect of prop tech because again, technology, smartphones, smart communities all coming together. But in terms of challenges, what would you say is the biggest challenge? Because after everything that we've discussed, clearly prop tech will provide a lot of benefits to buyers, sellers, and also the middlemen. Mm -hmm. Then why is it not happening in such a huge scale? What are the major challenges that you see for this sector in this region? 
from from our side we see the the behavioral change as one of the challenge uh, because uh, customers and the users are used to a way for a longer period of time so a lot of our focus is on how do we make that behavioral change uh, which has happened in again other domains like how do you order food today is a behavioral change yeah how do you order cap today is a behavioral change so we are trying to do that um, i would say that is one of the big challenge that we are having so how do you bring in that change into customers right and from your perspective of what would you see as the challenge it's about acceptance uh, acceptance from the person who's going to actually sell the property or who is the developer and those sort of as uh, the investors uh, at the same time uh, as a business knowing that what you want to deliver mm-hmm. so as we said earlier it's again customer focused and how you can add more value to our customers how can the experience uh, today uh, buying a property Uh, in some cases might be a good experience in some cases you might have a bad experience in terms of the number of days that you spend chasing your bank yeah. going back with uh, the uh, the paperwork if technology can help uh reduce that those timelines or optimize in a, in a manner that the customer feels that yes it's a, it's a nice experience i can really do it mm-hmm. and that's where uh, and uh, which of a company who can achieve that in the best manner will be the market leader right but there clearly is a lack of adoption at this scale right uh, the technology is new the concept is new mm-hmm. uh, which is coming out to the market so obviously there is a transition phase where people are initially hesitant to start looking out who's going to actually take the first jump yeah. uh, or try it out as a technology and right. then probably uh, start adopting okay so right let, let me just open the floor for this one of my favorite conversations that i would like to have when i'm outside of work for coffee um expo 2020 of course there's just so much buzz around expo 2020 we've seen oversupply being one of the major problems which is why prices have fallen over the years from i think 2015 onwards the prices are dropping uh but what What is going to happen after Expo 2020? There's this huge build-up. Will there be a crash? I think it's for both of y'all. It's just an opinion. It's the same. I mean, I've had this discussion with the multiple people over a coffee, and uh, what I heard, or rather, what is a strong sentiment is. that after obviously after viewing the expo a lot of people are going to go back and a good amount of crowd is going to come back to see what's really really in for them in this country mm-hmm. and that's where uh, most of the developers are preparing themselves to uh, to have that uh, influx of crowd who's going to definitely invest they're going to start new businesses in dubai and and it's it's again uh, something that because people are going global and people want to actually expand their businesses now every company yep. doesn't want to be restricted into their own uh, you know economic zone or yeah. geographical location they want to expand and obviously as part of that expansion uh, every couple of years there will be a market correction in future i think so it's it's going to improve but we've seen those cycles so many times 2008 the credit crunch happened and then 2014 oil prices um, brought the entire market down but now do you think with prop tech and the emerging to prop tech this could serve as a shield for these crashes especially for the sector so i'll i'll go back to my earlier three categories so tech in construction tech in selling tech in operations mm-hmm. so if you look at uh, expo 2020 we can see a lot of uh, data already shared where there is heavy tech being used during construction yeah uh, that's the reason they are able to complete within a shorter period of time so that is ticked mm-hmm. and then next one is where the, when you have to sell this so after expo so how do you sell how do you attract global uh, customers yeah. that is where tech can come and help in terms of even crowd funding in other areas uh, how do you sell this mm-hmm. so next can operations so when the properties are well maintained well operated mm-hmm. and it helps to do a sooner like faster roi on the property itself when you're spending less on operations or maintenance it's going to ease up the process essentially true, but is true. it also going to help the sales happen sales as well so now proptech is there so mm-hmm. um, there are a lot of technology available where discovery uh, guaranteed and right. a lot of reads uh, in case of us and all there is a concept of reads where people pull in money and then go and buy right? right so so those things can help okay all right and then talk about 
just to just to uh, add on again it's again what you just rightly said is going to help build customer trust right. so it's it's going to instill more confidence with the in, into the consumers it's going to instill more confidence to the customers to make that move True. in them in terms of investing right so speaking of trust though data analytics and big data is something that is being used in all industries but then there's the whole aspect of privacy cyber security etc why talking about technology we can't avoid the whole aspect of uh, cyber security because there's so much money being mobilized in the whole process so how is it that that problem can be looked into and because you mentioned trust don't you think people will have that trust issue because traditionally that's not how it's being done here in the region so i think so any any new technology that comes into perspective it's going to have its own risks and one of the biggest challenge is data security because today if you look all your data is available online most of your data whatever your whatever you intend to post online is available on data on 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 the, on the internet yeah so definitely there is a risk and it's a big challenge and there are a lot of uh, establishments and companies working on uh, reducing these risks mm -hmm. evaluating that okay find these are the potential hazards or potential risks that come in in in, in terms of cyber crimes which you can limit up to an extent so as technology improves as technology grows it is typically again uh, the again one of the biggest discussions we are having today in the iot space is mm -hmm. how scalable it is it is so, okay. because we don't want this technology to be fading away after a couple of years or asking for example uh, prabhu comes and says father let's have the system online and five years day, uh, later i called up back prabhu and said oh that's uh, that's that's again dead we have to do so, a complete reinvestment so that's not going to happen yeah. we can't do a complete retrofit we need to upgrade so that's one of the things as consumers we would be looking for example if i'm going to have a chat with uh, prabhu i'm going to look at how scalable the systems are going to be at the same time i'm looking at the data security side as well mm -hmm. that how is my data being protected because today we're talking about cloud yeah what of all my information that i i send away from my buildings obviously uh, what is the the contracting between us going to be and that's another area that we might need to have a longer discussion is how prepared are our legal organizations ready in terms of reviewing these contracts to protect the data that we transfer with onto the cloud do you agree from your perspective so my view of this is uh, the demand brings in solutions mm -hmm. so data driven operations in real estate is still in early stage that has to increase people have to start adopting that model that is all whole prop tech either you are selling you are operating right. everything is data driven more real time that's what is going to happen so one is that need comes in mm -hmm. today there are technology available to secure them okay uh, Uh, it's it's more of a matter of giving importance for security thinking through the problem yeah. and dying there are pieces of technology you can always avail and secure right uh, but it's like a chicken and egg problem where first we need data driven operations to start right and finally unfortunately we're running short on time but just in closing uh, would you all like to predict when the next real estate cycle is going to happen <laughs> i hope it doesn't happen but it, there will be corrections it's it? inevitable isn't it i mean it is going to happen at some point <laughs> yeah so from a moment more from a tech point of view um, uh, i see like more and more maybe in another 5 years okay the real estate operations could be as seamless as ordering food or ordering cab oh wow so that's what we want to bring in like you say inshallah i hope yeah. your words are true and it actually happens but thank you so much for joining us here sure. and thank you for those insights sure. and thank you for watching ab live we will be back again next tuesday